Hey guys, so today's video is a really big one um, and really unexpected actually at this point because, well I'll explain that in a minute, but as you can see sitting here next to me, we have the new Maria Garcia doll, um, which we'll be discussing and reviewing. I want to give you guys a bit of background on this really quickly. Um, but before I do, if you're just here for the unboxing and the review, go ahead and skip ahead and I will put down below, like, at what point you should skip ahead to so that you don't have to hear all the other blather, because there's, there's a good bit of it. Alright, so I want to start off by saying, first of all, I'm wearing the Rainbow High shirt that I got from Amazon. Um, the quality is really eh on the print, but apparently it's supposed to be that way, but like, I'm still not loving it, and I was going to return it, and then... Bear's father passed away, and then we had vacation. I was like, you know what? I'll return it when we get back because, like, my mind is not. I can't focus on that right now. And so, a couple of weeks later, we get back from vacation, and I forgot I even had it. So I was I was cleaning my room, getting ready because Bear has sworn to this off Labor Day holiday weekend that we will put up shelves finally, uh, as long as it doesn't rain. And so I was, I was cleaning up a bit, trying to figure out where everything goes, and what, and I found it, and I thought, well, damn. Well, I can't return it now because it's been more than 30 days, 60 days, whatever. So I guess I'm just going to wear it. Um, so that, that's the thing that happened. But anyway, um, so, so getting, getting back to Maria here, this video was really hard for me because when I saw Maria's photos online and I'll like post a picture here, I wasn't really impressed. Not even just as a Mexican American person. But in general, there were a lot of things that just felt very culturally inaccurate. Not even to say wholly inaccurate, because... So, my family, the children and I specifically, we decorate for Dia de los Muertos. Um, and we put up pictures of our family, we light candles for them. We have all of Katrina's, we decorate the ofrenda, like all of that. And so I have a lot of Katrina's, and in general... None of them dress like this. Um, this is a very, I guess, like more of an American based style of Dia de los Muertos dressing than Mexican based style, which we'll get in into that a bit more later. Um, so, my first thoughts were actually just that I was kind of sad that, you know, she wasn't more colorful, more accurate, uh, didn't have more symbolism that was specific to Dia de los Muertos. Um, and I think a lot of, for, at least for what I've seen in comments, a lot of other Mexican and Mexican-American doll collectors felt the same way. There were some that really loved her and they were like, no, I mean, she feels accurate to me. But the majority were very, like, against it. We, I can't even say we. Like, I have always been torn on the issue because I do collect Dia de los Muertos things um, and I decorate my house with them during the holiday and whatnot. Um, but... And I love Rainbow High, so, like, obviously, like, it was really hard for me. I was very, very torn because here's this doll that could have been so much more. And then I saw the price point. And if you're going to charge people $130, $140 something with tax and whatever shipping could possibly be, um, this shouldn't be it. Like, this is, like, maybe maybe a $90 doll and that might be stretching it honestly because they give you like the cool light up box with this we'll we'll see that later as well but Sheila comes with one outfit Lily came with two and accessories and whatever and she was 80 so the $130 price jump I know a lot of it does go into the box I'm an out-of-box collector so this does nothing for me whatsoever um but I'm sure a lot of people really enjoy the novelty of it uh, I don't really have the space for it either. I barely have the space for the dolls that I have. So, hmm, this is a thing. But, but, eh, eh, we'll see. So, I did want to talk about a couple of things because, obviously, the community has been going really wild over this. Even today, but right before I made this video, in fact, um, I posted a picture saying that she arrived and I was going to do my best to give the most honest review. I didn't order this doll. Um... I actually was really torn on it because I had the money to order her and then I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Like, I didn't quite feel right giving MGA $130 and making them think it's okay to give us a doll that is 
not more culturally accurate and I didn't necessarily feel like letting MGA think that charging $130 for a doll in a light up box was a good idea like I don't really want to necessarily support that behavior um so I, I had some guilt towards that I was very like if a buyer I'm gonna feel like a really bad person for I guess like letting MGA continue with this cycle of kind of abusing us with the prices and before you say inflation Recently, across the U.S., a lot of folks got pay raises. There was a rise in a lot of the minimum wage. And then immediately after that, corporations said, well, if we have to pay them more money, we're not taking that out of our profit. So instead, we're just going to raise the prices of everything and make up for it like that. So inflation is really just the company saying that, that it's not even just profits like so they can keep their business in order it's profits so that their ceo has multiple homes usually in multiple countries whatever it has fancy cars etc and i get that that's part of the perk of being innovative and starting a company and whatever but price gouging is really what this is more coming down to and we're seeing it from a lot of companies really because a lot of doll companies especially are seeing mga lead the way with this and it's not to say that these dolls aren't better quality than anything we've ever seen before prior, and therefore, to some degree, they do deserve the price hike, but it's getting kind of out of control during a time when a lot of Americans are, like I said, one bad day away from losing everything. And so I was offended by the price, honestly, probably more than the doll, but both, both of them. So like I said, I didn't order this doll. Um, however, when, I saw that she was going to be released and people were saying, oh, she's on Walmart right now. I actually sent a link to my husband and I was like, would you look at the price on this? This is really insane. Um, I feel like they're really pushing it, you know, whatever. And I discussed that, like, I was really kind of torn on how I felt about the doll. Like, I was considering getting her specifically to customize to look more culturally accurate, etc. And a couple of days later, I said something else about it, about the light-up box or whatever, I think. And he was like, well, yours is on the way. And I was like, my what? And he's like, your doll. And I was like, what? Um, and apparently he had ordered her for me a couple of days prior. And you can see that whole conversation like on my Instagram. But I was actually really shocked because it was such a sweet thing. It was such a wonderful gift and very, very thoughtful because he knows I collect, you know, Katrina's and Dia de los Muertos stuff. He knows that I collect Rainbow High and have all of them and I'm a completionist so I was definitely going to want her one way or the other um and so he ordered it for me it's a very sweet gift now despite that I am going to do my best to do an honest review and to not let the fact that she was a gift from someone I value so much and and whatever um someone I treasure to I guess color my perception of her I want my review to be really really honest and really with a lot of thought and care so here are some of the things I wanted to tell you guys really quickly, because um, I know I've already been talking for a bit. Dia de los Muertos, or Day of the Dead, is not one day. It's actually two days, November 1st and November 2nd. Um, the first being All Saints Day and the second being All Souls Day. Um, All Saints Day is mostly like about children, whereas All Souls Day is about like really kind of for adults um, and, you know, remembering the adult loved ones that you've lost. So I keep feeling like I have like a hair on my eyelid, but like at the same time, the nerves on the side of my face are still messed up. So I can't ever tell if there's anything there or if I'm just crazy. Um, okay, so I had to write stuff down because it was a lot, you guys, and I really didn't want to forget things or say things in a way that wasn't really thoughtful. Um, just because that's very easy to do. So we will be talking about her outfit and her hat and why people felt it was culturally inaccurate. A lot of the complaints, I want to start with the first one that actually really bothers me. Um, her name is Maria Garcia and there are a lot of people on Instagram specifically. I had seen a few on, on Facebook too um, and even that's a thing like we'll get into but a lot of the people said that her name was very common and that's why they didn't like it. And then they proceeded to say it was boring, uninspired, it was an ugly name, like all kinds of stuff. First of all, if you're going to say it's common, that means you recognize that a lot of people have it. That is a very common name, a lot of people have that name, etc. Including probably a lot of Mexican or Mexican-American um, doll collectors. So then if you proceed to insult that name, 
without any thought to the people that you're insulting, specifically the people who are Mexican and Mexican-American that you're trying to argue that this, com this company has disrespected and you're going to disrespect them. Like, what? What? What is that? What? But anyway, moving on. So one of the other big complaints that I wanted to address was the lack of Simpasuchil, which is the, like, uh, Aztec marigold is another name for it. It's a very beautiful, like, orange or yellow marigold flower, um, and they're pretty large, and they're native to Mexico, and so we did get one. I, I don't know if it was a, it feels like an afterthought. I cannot say that it wasn't something they had planned all along, but it feels like an afterthought, and we did get one on the box this is very like dollar store quality i'm not even gonna lie to you guys like it's it's a dollar store quality flower um and that's the only one as far as i have seen in any of the pictures of her online it is the only simpasuchil or marigold that you will see anywhere on her and it's just kind of stuck to the ribbon on the front of the box um so yeah it 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 definitely feels like an afterthought it does not feel like something that a lot of thought went into but that's just me now she does have roses roses in her headpiece roses on her dress and here's why okay and, and everybody's like okay it's very culturally inaccurate and people are like well it's just a flower i like roses it should be fine i'm going to explain to you why it's culturally inaccurate really quickly and Again, Mexico is like America and that it has many different states, so things vary, including the weather from one side of the country to the other, just like California's weather is different than Virginia's weather, etc., etc. So this isn't like wholly inaccurate, but it's pretty inaccurate. Okay, so I had to write these down because I couldn't remember all of them, honestly, um, with their meanings and stuff, but there are, you know, really six big flowers technically kind of seven that are involved in dia de los muertos obviously the simpasuchil which is the the like aztec marigold um the smell of it is very sweet it's supposed to attract the souls back home which is why people use it to decorate their altars um and stuff like that their ofrendas and then the coxcomb which is um it's supposed to be representative of the blood of christ and it's like kind of a long flower people use that a lot for their altars um i have to look uh, also for tombstones there are the chrysanthemums which are you know they're pretty big boys too um they typically mean like sympathy or it being at peace they're used for decorating altars and grave sites but they're also sometimes used in flower crowns so honestly like a lot of the flower crowns that you see don't even necessarily have the marigold in them. What they have is like the chrysanthemum. Um, there's the gladiolus, which are very kind of long flowers. I actually grow some in my garden. Um, they're mostly used for funeral arrangements and they have a meaning of like remembrance. And then there is... <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, white hoary stalks, which I don't grow here. Like I don't, I don't know if I've ever actually seen one in person, honestly. Um, and those tend to signify like innocence and they're typically used for children and then there's baby's breath baby's breath are used in in the um flower crowns sometimes as well as on gravestones and altars um and those means like love and innocence and purity um and then the dahlia which still blooms in november and that's the national flower and it's got um it, it means like elegance and dignity so those those seven flowers are all flowers that bloom during that time of year Roses really aren't in bloom in November in Mexico, and that's the problem, is that most of the Dia de los Muertos decorations are, from what they can gather locally that are in season, roses aren't it. They're not, for the most part, in season in November. So for them to use roses, and I get it, every, I've seen this argument on Facebook like a billion times, it's inspired by, it's not actually, you know, for Dia de los Muertos. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. The inspiration is there, obviously, in the face paint, but in almost everywhere else, it feels very thin, very under-researched. Although people felt like perhaps MGA didn't have a person of Mexican descent on their design team, but we can't really prove that they didn't. It doesn't feel like they did, because obviously there's a lot of things that feel like missing or off, but we can't prove that they didn't either, so... 
there's that. Okay, so the next one is that... <sighs> So let's talk really quick. Let's, let's rewind it back to the whole Facebook versus Instagram difference. Um, I have noticed a lot of people on Instagram were more likely to be critical of Malia. A lot of the people on Facebook were more supportive of her. They were like, well, you know, it's just a doll. It's not just a doll. It's a representation of someone else's culture and a religious holiday. Um, but that aside, you know, because that was everybody's point. Like, why are people being angry and rude about a doll they're not they're being rude or angry or they're upset about how their culture is being treated how their religious holiday is being represented it's not because it's just a doll and i feel like when people say that it actually makes things worse um it, it kind of blocks the discussion because people feel like okay you're not taking the actual subject seriously you're putting it off as oh it's a kid's toy so it shouldn't matter and you know so that's that has caused a lot of fights on social media Obviously, I'm sure we've all seen it. We're all sick of it, whatever. Um, and, and I've broached this question before and no one actually answered me. Would anything that MGA did with Maria, would any of it really be sufficient or um, would any of it satisfy us when it comes to making a commodified representative of a religious holiday is there anything they could have done where somebody wouldn't have complained where everybody would have been like okay that's that's fair that's reasonable that's you know not costume like it's it's very accurate representation with it a price range that people would have been satisfied with and that's that's the thing first of all they have to do it in a way that satisfies the culture and satisfies the people they're representing but also do it in an affordable way but we're going to open her up here in a minute and see if the fabrics used and the, the paint job and the box, if all of that really does justify the price of $130. And I'm going to be honest with you, I can tell you now, there is nothing. This doll can make my toast and raise my children for me. And I still don't know if I would think it was worth $130, but that's me personally. Obviously, it doesn't stop me from buying them, so I can't, my complaints are limited on that. Um... As far as things I think that MGA could have done better to satisfy doll collectors of Mexican or Mexican-American descent, more texture, more color, and honestly, better makeup. I kind of, and we'll see that they actually stopped at the lip line. They did not do the skull makeup on the chin, which is weird. I wish they'd just done it full face or given her a mask. Not everybody paints their face. Um, masks are also commonly used in Dia de los Muertos, so that would have been fine. I kind of wish they had done that instead of painting her face, but that's just me. And a lot of it is because I didn't think the face paint was very good, at least not from the pictures. But I would like to reiterate for all of these people, and I've, I've really only seen this part on Facebook. Um, I have seen some stuff on Instagram with you know, people being like, well, if you're a Mexican and you like this, there's something wrong with you. But first of all, don't disrespect the people who you're fighting to get respected. Like, what? This is never going to make sense to me, ever, ever. But, but, the one thing I noticed a lot on Facebook was people saying stuff like, um, you know, everybody's being nasty or negative over a doll. No, people are being nasty and negative over how their culture is being represented, how their religious holiday is being represented. But in that same vein, I firmly believe that being nasty and hurtful and saying harmful things and disrespectful things to people is not... It's counterproductive to the conversation we're trying to have. So to immediately jump on somebody because they like it or because they don't like it, it helps no one. If people don't like it, I mean, look, I, I am the first one to agree that I am sick of seeing so many complaints on Facebook posts, especially. You don't, I don't really see it in my feed on Instagram, but on Facebook, I see so much negativity every post. Like, I joined the groups to see customs and doll news and all this stuff, and all I see is people complaining. And I've repeatedly said that I firmly believe that most of these groups need to have 
because they, they do it all the time for other stuff a little thing at the top pinned like a thread that is pinned specifically for people to you know make their complaints or say what was wrong with their doll so that people can check it if they want to um if they need information about what a doll may be looking like or, or what kind of defects they might have or if they just feel like reading complaints but it's not just crammed on their throat and the main group that that is i guess like has this issue has zero mods and one admin and the admin I don't think is on regularly. Um, and so quite frequently that group and posts from that group just absolutely fall apart into like racist rants and craziness. And like, honestly, I would leave the group, but I get a lot of information from there too. So it's like, <sighs> how far can they go before my mental health is like no more? But we are going to open this doll and really look her over, give you an honest opinion, and talk to you about some of the other aspects of her that I think could have been upgraded. All right, you guys, let, let's get her open. So here we go. Looking at the box, it's really gorgeous. I just want to say, whoever did the artwork did an amazing job. Um, I wanted to definitely give a heads up to them. Now, we do have this big gold ribbon. Um, the little fake flower and then here's the tag the gold embossing is honestly really lovely I mean I don't know if you're a tag keeper but that's a thing so in order to open her we do have to remove this flower um, there's a round tape circle up top we're gonna set that bad boy aside and then I guess but this is what I was kind of worried about, is that I have to... I don't want to cut it. Let me see if I can... See, like, it's like a weird... Let me see if I can figure out how to open it. Hold on a second. Okay, y'all, let me just go ahead and get this out there that I'm real dumb, because all I had to do was untie the ribbon and it came undone. Alright, so here you guys can see her artwork. So I know that light's a little bright. Let me move it down. Look at the little stars in her eyes. I really wish they had done the bottom half of her face in white paint. And honestly, had the eye holes on the actual doll been like this on the art, I think it would have looked a lot better. At least from what I can see in the picture, her eye holes are like massive. All right, so you can see the roses, obviously. Now look, y'all, I hate red and purple together. I know I've said that a billion times in other videos. It's very, very clashy. I remember getting Monster High Operetta and I could not stand her because it was purple and red and I hate clashing colors. So of course, I was immediately put off by the fact that they did this to this poor doll. But I guess we're going to see if I hate it as much in person. I feel like I might. I'm not going to lie. All right, so you can see her crown, and honestly, that in itself is a throw to the, like, religious iconography of, like, the, you know, I don't, I don't know. Like, I like it, and I find it very common in American Dia de los Muertos stuff, um, but it really, you don't really see it on Katrina's, for the most part. I just want to go ahead and get that out there. Um, the earrings... If I had earrings like that in real life, I would absolutely wear them. I do kind of wish that they had done a turtleneck on the bodysuit. Like if they had painted the bottom of the face and done the turtleneck on the bodysuit so that it actually looked kind of full-length skeletal, I think it would have been way, way nicer. Um, I think just by cutting it off where they did, it's I'm not a fan. The heart in the center of her chest is again a throw to religious iconography. The little skeletal hand things, they sell those in real life at, like, Hot Topic for, like, $15. Or I think, like, Spencer's has them. And so, yeah, if you ever want to cosplay as her, those are a real thing. I think they actually have them at Spirit Halloween, too. But so it's really gorgeous. I actually did a non-Dia de los Muertos um, photo shoot with a headpiece that the model wore that was very similar to this. So I'm kind of fond of it. All right, let's check out the back of the box. Or, I guess, the side of the box. <laughs> okay, that's really pretty. A little hummingbird. The box is beautifully embossed. And I just wish they had thought it through, did a little bit of research, and realized roses aren't really the best choice. 
Um, as far as the charro hat, it's it's kind of inaccurate because while it is Mexican, um, I think a lot of people's issue with it was that the Katrinas don't wear charro hats. What they wear is actually um, more based on a European style because the history of Katrina is based in European style. All right, we get more of a view of her absolutely stunning face. I think it could have been better, like I said, just if they, the fact that they didn't paint the chin makes me feel sad, but all of the embossing and like the gorgeous detail on the box does make me really happy. The art is really pretty. I will not take that away. It doesn't make it more culturally accurate, but it is lovely. All right, let's see, is there anything on this side different? No, it's the same as the other side. All right, I have no idea what I'm going to do with this box. I have no need for a light-up box. It should be... Oh, okay. What? 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 So this whole thing comes off, which is great, because you know what, you guys? I was really stressed, because I collect the backs of all the boxes, and I wanted to frame them and have them all together, and I was like, I can't do this with this box, because it's a collector box. Bruh, what? This thing just folds out and comes off. So that's kind of cool. As far as her name, um, I don't see anything wrong with it, honestly. Maria is a very common Hispanic or Mexican name, but there is a reason for it, and it's a very respectful reason. So I'm not even going to argue that. Um, as far as the artwork, I just want to stick with that until we actually get to the doll. The artwork is gorgeous. Whoever did the artwork did an amazing job. It's very detailed. If I were an artist and I did this, I'd be proud as poop of myself. I am not particularly artsy <laughs> in that way. I can't draw for anything. I know nothing about digital art. This is really gorgeous. Um, so apparently, so it doesn't have it on this side. This side has, I guess, it looks like a magnet. And so I'm guessing it, oh, and there's another one towards the bottom. So I guess it just sticks to the, the thing in, in that. So, I don't, it's hard to read because it's really, really shiny. But in honor of her Mexican heritage and the traditions of Dia de los Muertos, Maria Garcia designed her very own custom gown and Calavera handbag. It's her favorite day of the year because it celebrates her two passions, familia and fashion. Um, and I feel like that, that's kind of, kind of odd because, yeah, it is a day that's really about family and stuff like that. But I've never really known anybody to be like, but make it fashion. Let's celebrate our dead loved ones, but make it fashion. So, I mean, I'm not hating it. I don't love it either. It's just kind of strange. All right. Here's the box that she's in. Again, like really lovely gold embossing. And I'm going to tell you guys now, I was nervous because my Lily came in kind of a crush box from Amazon. I was so nervous, and I'm really nervous to look at her face painting up close, because if it has flaws, I will probably throw myself off a bridge. Um, so already, like, her heart's crooked. Hopefully I can straighten that. So I see multiple tones of purple in her hair. That's kind of nice. Um, I'm going to get a second one and dye it. Look how giant the eye holes are. Like, I really wish it was better shaped, like, the art on the box that's really my biggest complaint otherwise i mean her eyeliner from what i can tell inbox looks pretty even her lashes looks pretty even so far i've only seen one person on facebook whose doll had really really messy makeup um that would have been something i would have returned it but it looked like right under the eyes that the makeup got crumpled and when they tried to straighten it out it like broke off and they tried to repaint it on her doll um, or was it his? I can't, on their doll. And I will do my best to try and see if I can find those pictures again and show them to you guys. But if not, just know that, like, at least somebody out there has already had bad makeup and that's kind of scary. So this is the celebration edition. And I don't think that Lily had this on her box. So, or nor, nor did Kaya. So this is kind of a new thing, which means that there's a very good chance that they will have other holiday or celebration edition dolls you know what i'd love to see there was a a art i guess like a sketch or something that was posted at one point i can't remember if it was by the designer or the rainbow high page but it was this beautiful black doll and an outfit that looked very like fourth of july and honestly it would be so cool if they 
put her out on this like that's that's a thing so this please keep this address and packaging for reference since it contains important information contents including specifications and color may vary from photos depicted on package instructions included please remove all packaging including tags ties and tacking stitches before giving this product to a child wash the doll's hair and let it dry before styling <sighs> which means i put gel in it <sighs> okay I just i'm never gonna get over this i just want you guys to know the artwork like it looks so detailed like it's really nice artwork i just want to give the artist a hand on that all right and then here we have our instructions it shows us where to put the batteries okay i don't know what i did but i did it and she's glowing i didn't i don't think i touched a button i don't i don't know all right, so quick start, remove the cover to activate the lights. After approximately 40 seconds of no activity, the light will turn off. To turn them back on again, either replace the cover or remove it again, or press the button on the side. Okay, there's a button on the side, and I guess I missed it. Um, it just basically talks about the battery compartment. She comes with a stand. Um, so you're supposed to take her out, cut the tags, do all of that. Battery replacements, battery usage basic you know use all the same batteries and this and that or else you guys trying to open this with one hand is a thing i guess like it's not really all it's just safety instructions apparently we're gonna just toss that to the side i mean not that safety instructions aren't important they are they really really are i'm just wild All right, you guys, let's let's open her up and see her up close, huh? Okay, she was really easy to open. I basically just pulled her forward, slid off the cardboard backing of the box, and then flipped her back over and pulled off the plastic. They just slid right off. There was no tabs to undo, no anything like that. So here she is without all the glare from the plastic. And real quick, so this box, again, has the gold embossing um but the back isn't nothing i mean because it, it's covered anyway so there's no there was no real need for them to do any of that now as far as the bottom of the box so this is where you change the batteries but i don't see like a button that you're supposed to push for these lights maybe i'm missing it maybe it's on like, the side of the box sorry guys i'm knocking stuff over left and right Nothing on the sides. Ah, here we go. So here's the button on the bottom corner. I had to hunt for it, but that's okay. Wow. Okay. Look, I don't love a lot of the things about her, but I'm not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about quality stuff right quick. So let's see here. Get this light back up and knocked over. Here we go. All right, as far as her face paint, it looks really, really symmetrical. So one of the things I wanted to do is actually to buy one to customize and remove the skull face paint um, because I really don't love the red and purple. But the issue I have is that the skin tone here versus the darkening around the eyes. So they did that, I guess so it would look like eye holes. But the problem is, is that they couldn't get too close to the eyebrows or the eyelashes, you know, I guess, like, with this paint. So I don't know. It just looks really big and weird. I wish it looked, like I said, more more like the art where it fit around her eyes better. It was, like, closer to the bottom of the lashes and almost more ovally shaped. Well, not ovally, like, horizontal oval versus vertical oval. But I will say that her fa face paint seems to be very good quality. It feels really smooth. Everything is very, like, symmetrical. Her lips are nicely glossed. Even the lines on her lips, like, everything looks pretty good. Um, it doesn't really bother me, but I would say, like, the line on this side is thicker than the line on that side. But that's a minuscule, like, that's if I'm really, really nitpicking at it. Otherwise, I mean, her makeup is really good. 
the liner looks really even the lashes look really even um i do worry for anybody who because the box comes in closed who does get one with bad makeup because it's probably gonna be i feel like it's gonna be more noticeable with this style of makeup but yeah i mean hopefully everybody's comes with the kind of quality they deserve i feel really bad for the one person who got one that was messed up and hopefully they can get a return on that so, I mean, even the way they did the nose is really cute. Okay, so as far as her hair blend, I want to say I like the color purple. And I do think that this color purple is pretty, but I don't love it with the roses. I don't love the clashiness of that with the red. Um, the headband. Okay, so these are these are separate barrettes. And then the headband, I think, is, is a separate piece. So we'll have to take her out and check on those. Um, the earrings really cute really detailed like i i can't i can't knock that no matter how i feel about like the actual style of a lot of stuff the detail in the earrings is pretty amazing um let's see as far as the clothes go it's a little off-centered this stuff is and for some people that'll drive you crazy um again like this is if i was nitpicky about it it, it kind of drives me crazy, but I'm hoping once I unwrap her, I can kind of slide her dress around a little bit and it'll straighten itself out. Again, I wish this had been a turtleneck and that her face paint had come all the way down. That's the one major criticism that I have in terms of, like, style. Like, all cultural issues aside, just in style, I wish they had continued that up. Now, this is glittery, so that's kind of cool. Um, it's, it's an interesting print. I mean... The fishnet is, is neat. The gold fingers. Like, this is really, really nice detail. I want to find more to criticize her on. But once you get past the cultural aspects, if you're breaking down just the overall quality, I'm still not going to say she's worth $130, but if they had had her for, like, $90, I probably would have dropped it and not thought twice about it. Um, so these are actually, like, embroidered layered flowers they're multi-dimensional they're not flat these ones are flat um the fabric is kind of it's your usual satin i mean it's not necessarily cheap feeling but it's not very expensive feeling either okay so all of this ruffle is not just lace it's actually like embroidered and i do want to point that out just for anybody wondering um and again here you've got these little crystal dots and then again, the multidimensional embroidered roses. And then another layer of that really nice black embroidered part. Um, and then the purse. It's not my favorite purse I've ever seen at all. It's not even really very Dia de los Muertos. The makeup on it is not really that great. I mean, I do appreciate the real chain. Um, I am curious if, like, it opens at all, so I guess we'll find that here in a minute. And then the hat, again, this is really soft, like, super, super soft. I guess it's supposed to be felt, but it feels softer and nicer than felt. Very nice embroidered, but I will say, I've seen this hat, like, very similar to it in pet stores for, like, small dogs and other small animals for about $5. So... It's not the most expensive looking piece. I do wish they had done like the lace kind of veil that comes down that we see on Katrina hats. Um, and maybe that's something I'll add at some point. Let's go ahead and cut her out and get a more close up look at her. Okay, you guys. So on a very important note. Um, <sighs> you can even see it even better. So the plastic thing that holds her in, this big chunky piece in order to remove that and really kind of be able to display her in her box nicely without that big chunk of plastic it is a pain in the butt to cut out technically you could cut all the tape on the back of the box open it up and cut the tabs on the back and slide them out i just had to took the scissors and cut them but doing it so that i didn't scratch the box was really hard um, if you untape the box obviously you're going to have to retape it or it's just going to be weird um, because that holds i guess I don't know if it holds anything, like the light mechanism, because it feels pretty thin. But that is a thing that I would warn you of. 
I don't feel any wires. Let me turn them back on. It, yeah, so the wires might be inside that part of the box because they're not out here. Um, so this is how you break it down just to kind of use it as a stage. Once you put her on her stand, she's kind of too tall to go back under here all the way. Before I undress her and show you all of her parts and pieces, I did want to say, because I know people are going to ask, box hair obviously is going to need washing or straightening because it's got these big crimps in it from where they like flatten it against the box. And the back looks like this. But before anybody freaks out, she's not bald. She just needs her hairbrush because it's been in the box. That's pretty pretty standard at this point for most dolls to kind of look like that especially when they've had their hair split to either side in the box but i am going to take her out undress her and look through the rest of this to see just how well she's rooted so give me just a second okay you guys so let's look at all of the parts and pieces and i'm going to start with the dress because that is something that a lot of people had i guess like a, a really big issue with mine is kind of sound crooked like if you look on this side the roses go down where the seam is and on this side it kind of doesn't there's like extra fabric right here so it's not 100 percent even but it's not like i mean would i have liked it to be more even for the price sure but i don't necessarily think it's the biggest deal one of the things about her dress is and i mean literally like google searches will show you this dress looks a lot more in a way like a flamenco dress from spain in that it has you know all these ruffles at the bottom and that it's red and there are roses um the little heart is kind of a catholic influence and obviously catholicism was something that was brought over by the spaniards to mexico so that's what a lot of people took issue with the dress also if you do even just a simple google search of dia de los muertos you will see that this color and style of dress and especially the roses are something that are very representative of an american costume style of dia de los muertos and that a lot of the things that you see on google are very uh, american models you know modeling it for photo shoots and they're wearing it as a costume um it's something that's very very americanized about dia de los muertos so this dress is and the roses are more what you'd expect from that versus the actual mexican like indigenous style but also in mexico because it's made up of many states all of those states have like little twists and and differences in the way that they dress you know there's a lot of variances in both the dresses and the traditional um that they pass along from state to state the dress itself it's not necessarily wholly accurate or inaccurate as much as it is a very localized, Americanized version. And so for a lot of Mexican people, that's very offensive. And for a lot of American people, they're like, well, this looks like something I would wear if I were going to dress up as a Katrina. And there have been a lot of fights about that. There are a lot of Mexican people who are like, I would wear this. This is gorgeous. And, you know, so I do think that their feelings should be taken into consideration as well. Obviously, not everybody from Mexico is going to share the same opinion on everything. So just, just something to keep that in mind. As far as the actual quality of it, um, the fabric, like I said, it's just an inexpensive kind of satin. The embroidering is honestly what makes it really nice. I don't, I guess these little dots are supposed to be like, a um, to represent crystals, but they literally look like somebody glued crystals on and then they all fell off. Um, and the fabric is kind of wrinkly. Like I said, it's not really necessarily sewn the straightest, but if you've ever tried to make doll clothes, you will understand, like, it is very hard. They're very tiny. So if you look under here, there's actual crystals on this layer, and they're various different sizes. They look to be red, but they might just be clear and see-through. I feel like that's more the case. Again, with all the little dots, which, and there's some little sequins even. The dots, like I said, I don't love it because it really does look like there were things glued there and they all fell off, but it's, it's, it adds texture. I can say that, it adds, <laughs> it adds texture. The sequins are nice, but they're not necessarily evenly sewn on in, in each section or anything like that. I don't know if that makes a difference. Again, that kind of feels nitpicky. All right, so under the skirt, and you can see underneath the skirt where like the glue went through, um, for the rhinestone. So I do think these little dots showing show that they are some kind of glitter glue maybe used in like sparingly small amounts. All right, so this is actually really gorgeous. 
like, look at the beautiful embroidered skulls. But you know, the sad part is you will never see this part because it's hidden. So they have all of this really beautiful embroidery and it doesn't matter because unless you're lifting your skirt up, you're not gonna see it. All right, as far as the back of the dress goes, it's your very standard, you know, Velcro closure, nothing fancy there. Overall, my thoughts on the dress are that it's very well done for doll clothes. I mean, if I were like ordering this in a people clothes and it came sewn crooked like this, I'd probably want to return it because it does cause it to bunch up and be kind of weird and pull to one side. Um, but for doll clothes, for as small as they are, it's nice. If you're a perfectionist, you're probably not going to love it. Let's be honest. The little jewel thing is cool. It did get more even and like straightened out once I took it off. I think it was just twisted a bit in the box. That's still kind of, it's going to irritate me for life now, but whatever. It's not really that serious um, unless you choose to make it such. I will say the 3D roses are a cool touch. Just in, the embroidery in general makes it feel a much higher quality than like the print on clothes that we're used to from Mattel. All right, moving on. The hat. Okay, you guys, so this hat, like I said, it feels really nice. Um, it's, Katrina's tend to have lace around the edge of their hats, and I wish that this hat had that. I wish it were the more kind of style that actual Katrina's wear, but it's not bad. The embroider makes it for a very nice, higher quality touch. I don't know what this felt is, but like it is a really soft, nice feel, but it doesn't feel expensive. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, the like sewing on the edges of the hat is a nice touch. The hat itself is nice. But again, I'm pretty sure I saw this similar hat at the pet store for like $5 that you could get for chihuahuas. Alright, so you guys have gotten a pretty good look at that. Let's move on. Oh, and the ends of the hat, yeah, I think I showed you guys that. Alright, the boots. The boots are a part that I was really looking forward to. Look at these, bro. They're so nice. They're like pleather. Look at this little cap toe. That's such a cool additional touch. You've got these little things that's supposed to look like buckles. Okay, we can say whatever we want about the rest of the doll, but these boots are sick. Like, absolutely sick. High quality feeling. Really, really nice. 10 out of 10. <laughs> I love these. I'd honestly probably use them on somebody else, though, because, again, you have these stunning boots, and guess what you can't do? See them underneath her dress. Yeah, I'm definitely either going to redress her in something cuter or use these on somebody else and give her a nice pair of red heels because these boots are going to waste tucked up under there. All right, for the accessories. Now, the purse actually does open. Um, I don't love the weird little diamond printy things around the eyes. I hate that it's purple. It, I don't know if you guys can see it, if I can even get close enough. But if you look at the tooth, it's like a holographic paint, but it looks really scratched up in the center. You can kind of see it right there. Um, and then, because it's painted, it's not like a jewel stuck on like this headpiece one is. Um, and then, of course, it's got this little piece, which is really cute. These are, like, kind of nice. Like, they actually kind of wiggle back and forth. They feel cool. The fact that it opens and closes is nice. The chain. The little tassel with the RH. Overall, I wish that it had been black or white, and I wish that they had painted it and made it colorful and given them like something other than these weird little fake crystal print, because this purse could have been super cool. If it had just had a few things different, I mean, it's pretty neat overall, even though it's hideously purple, um, but just a few small changes could have made it a 10 out of 10. For now, I'll give it uh, a 7 out of 10 for a solid effort and the fact that it opens and the fact that the chain is real. The dress, I would probably give a 7 out of 10. Honestly, if the embroider had been straight on this, it probably would have been a 10 out of 10. And if they had taken that level or that layer with the skulls and maybe put it on the top, it would have been a 10 out of 10. The hat... It's like a 5 out of 10 at best. The embroidery is beautiful, but it feels cheap overall. 
and it could have come from a pet store the accessories okay wait like the accessories are a thing so let's break them down kind of separately first of all these like like skeletal hand things they have a little part right there that hooks on the finger so i got one of our hairs in there i'm gonna give these like honestly they're so cool i remember seeing these at like hot topic and wanting them like in human size i would probably give these a 10 out of 10 just for innovation just for the fact that they thought to do it they made it and it's cool looking i will give them a 10 out of 10 um I don't know like i really like them I, i'm not big on gold stuff in general i'm not usually like i'm a much more like a silver fan person than a gold person but like they're still pretty cool as far as the earrings the bottom shape is kind of weird for me how it comes out but it's really i wish i could pick it up really good on camera it's really well detailed like you could see the little face that's carved the lines and the hair that separate it um they're they're really nice doll earrings again i would probably give these a 10 out of 10 because they're actually like if it was just ugly chunky plastic and you couldn't see her actual like skeletal face carved in them i probably wouldn't score it as high but that's a lot of detail in a very small area all right these boys I'm only going to give like a 3 out of 10. These feel like they could have come with any Barbie or like cheap knockoff doll. They're very squishy plastic. They feel incredibly cheap. The hair clip for them is really, really bulky. And trying to get these out of her braids, because they stuck it kind of in it to her braid, immediately messed up her hair on one side. Like I have to redo that braid now because it looks kind of doo-doo. So these boys get, honestly, I don't even want to give them a 3 out of 10 look they're they're pretty cheap and awful i'm gonna give them like a two out of ten and the only reason they get that much is because they at least painted it with a gradient it's not all one shade of red so it's not as cheap looking as it could be but 10 out of 10 don't love them i wish they'd used real flowers these boys are a two out of ten at best this baby i kind of love it not gonna lie i don't know that without it being rubber banded on it would stay all that well um i don't think it would but since you can just rubber band it on pretty easily and have it not be super visible, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I really like it and I do feel like it could be used for other things. Look, it's even got like braided like chain work on the headband. Like, I think they did a nice job with it. Alright, moving on. The bodysuit. <sighs> I'm going to stick with the bodysuit and probably give it... Like it's 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 not terribly done but it does look american costumey in a way but i don't think it's it's in a such a bad way that i can super criticize it and not feel like i'm being dumb about it um i would say though it's gonna get a six out of ten for me because i feel like it should have been a turtleneck you cannot change my mind on that um honestly it would have been cool if it was an entire bodysuit like chin to toe like done but um it's not bad it's not bad at all i mean i kind of like the weird glittery skeleton thing it's nicely detailed um it's not necessarily 100 percent accurate as to what her body would be like but it's up there like it's pretty good i can't argue too much all right you guys let's check her out herself hold on a second okay guys wait 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 i'm gonna raise that score to an 8 out of 10 because they took the time to do the back they didn't have to, but they did. And I can genuinely appreciate that. Alright, so her stand is gold with gold glitter. It's kind of cute. Alright, so the hair, it, it feels nice. It's going to need washing. It's going to need decrimping. I'm probably going to fix that braid where I took that big chunky rose clip out. It's not thin. It's actually really decent um, as far as rooting goes. I mean, it's way better than Jet, way better than a lot of the series. Three Girls, Slumber Party. I, I'm going to have to heat it so that it actually falls back and covers that. Because they put it on two parts, now it's smooshed like that and it won't. Like, even combing it, it just 
does its thing. So I'm not no choice but to wash her very expensive hair. But overall, I mean, there's no giant bald spots. The rooting is actually pretty solid. I was I was pleased by that. Look at her little adorable fingernails. Those are cute. I mean, overall, she's what you would expect in terms of body and hair. Her hair is actually nicer than I expected, to be honest. I was kind of scared that I was going to get $130 doll with a $10 doll's hair. Let's not lie. Alright, as for the face. Her makeup is actually really well applied, which I was very, very nervous about. My main complaint is honestly that they didn't finish the bottom half. Okay, that's, that's like the biggest thing. And then the eye socket thing. Like, I really wish it was better done. Like, if they had just brought this bottom one up a little bit, like right below the lashes, and then maybe brought this in a tiny bit. I'm not sure if they could have because of the crease right there. But, like, it would have been so much better. Like, literally, if they just brought that bottom one up a little bit, it would have been 100%. I wanted to get her to customize to take the skull paint off. But because of this dark stuff right here, having to go around her eyes that close and each individual lash is scary. I'm not saying I can't do it. I'm not saying I won't do it. But I'm saying it's a little scary. I am looking forward to dyeing one of her. I think I'm definitely going to give her some rich chocolate brown hair when I get a second one. Um, okay, so as far as the doll, if I had to rate her, nails are good, hair is pretty solid. I mean, it's kind of choppy and uneven. It's really what you would expect from your normal, like what we've grown to expect from Rainbow High's normal like 20 to $30 doll range. So it's not like the best hair ever, but it is nicely rooted. It's really the face paint is the only thing about the doll itself that I, I have like real complaints about. It could have been much nicer. I could even deal with the eye holes if they had just followed through and painted the bottom half of it. I'm going to put it back together really quick, so give me just a second. Okay, you guys. Final thoughts. Packaging, 10 out of 10. Uh, light up gimmick like 3 out of 10 it's cool but like I don't even know how one gets it to stay on for longer than like 30 seconds like what if you just wanted them to stay on so I might be missing something there but like as far as I know it's like the whole okay they turn themselves off in like a few seconds eh eh but other than that the overall packaging like 10 out of 10 I'm just not big on the lighting gimmick um other than the lighting gimmick, like, literally my only complaints were I wish her dress was sewn a little more evenly. Um, I hate that the best parts of her dress and her shoes can't even be seen. Uh, same with the cool bodysuit. Like, most of it's hidden. I wish the bodysuit had a higher neck and that the eye holes on her face went up a little higher. As far as everything else, she comes with a lot of really cool accessories. Is she $130 worth of accessories? No. Not to me. Honestly, I would have felt like 80 or 90 was fair, and even that's hard when you look at Lily, who was 80, and came with two outfits, two pairs of shoes, accessories, whatever. Um, and this dress is really, really nice. I just don't feel like it should add on as much as what they're trying to add on. Um, overall, I'm going to give her an 8 out of 10. I wouldn't necessarily rush out to buy her unless you're just absolutely in love with her. I would wait and see if she ever comes down on sale. Do I think she will? It's hard to say, but I'm not really feeling like she's going to. Um, so I'll probably just grab a second one whenever I get a chance. Hopefully I'll be able to and then do a nice custom for you guys. I wish they'd done her hair brown. I wish they had added anything but the purple to go with the red. But I don't dislike her. And I, I, I know I could say that I do just to sound cool because that's what a lot of people want to hear. But honestly, in person, she's more than what I expected. And to explain, if they sold a Pulip that came in an outfit like this, you would absolutely expect, if she were a Pulip, to pay $130 or more. As somebody who's collected Pulips, I would pay $130 for a Pulip that looked like this. So it makes me ask myself, why wouldn't I pay that same amount for a Rainbow High doll that looks like this? She's very obviously a collector's edition. But I feel like slapping on 40 extra dollars because it's a collector's edition is, is 
too much for me, honestly. I probably love her more than I thought I would because Bear gave her to me as a gift and a very, like, surprise gift. Um, I will say, like, because you guys probably don't know him, he's the kind of person who is very, very practical. He buys things that he believes people will use versus things that are just, like, frivolous and pretty. Um, he's not really one for buying surprise gifts. He would rather know what someone wants, what they like, and what they need. So it's very unusual for him to just like go out and splurge and buy, you know, something that's such a big surprise and expensive. Um, he is really romantic, so I'm not going to say he's never done stuff like that before. But it's usually like, surprise, I'm taking you on a vacation you didn't expect. Or, you know, stuff like that. Um... And well, he does pay for all of my dolls. Like, he doesn't really go to the store and pick them out without me being there. So this was, like, a massive surprise. And I'm not going to act like that didn't make me love her more than I thought I would otherwise. But just breaking it down, minus the few things that I personally don't love, she's not really heavily flawed. Do I wish they had used better hair? Maybe that, that like, wasn't so choppy in the back? Yeah, I do wish she'd had, like, the nicer, softer, kind of wavy hair, similar to, like, what Bella has, versus the super straight hair, like, Heather. Um, just because it looks better on the ends when it's cut, it doesn't look as jagged. But she is really beautiful. I genuinely mean that. Like, I can't go out and say, well, here's a bunch of criticisms of her because I don't like her price and I don't like that she's not culturally accurate. I did my best to give you guys a bit of background on the culture and why people feel she's inaccurate, but that aside, if you're able to put that aside, she's a lovely doll. And I really hope that for the people who love her and who do buy her, that you're able to enjoy her without a lot of people criticizing you for liking or buying her. You've heard my opinions. I did my best to keep them as honest as possible. And to not let, you know, the fact that she was a very beautiful gift from someone I love very much taint my actual, like, opinion of the doll itself. Um, I would love to hear you guys' opinions. Please try to keep it respectful. I do want to leave you guys with one thing I read recently um, from an article about the subject. Because I didn't know, honestly, that I was Mexican until I was in my teens. I was adopted. And my parents really only told me, my adopted parents, because they were in a position where they had to. And it was way earlier than they should have told me because I was not emotionally mature enough to handle it at that age. But the situation that we were in, they had to tell me. So it was really something I spent a lot of my life researching because I didn't grow up with that natural influence to the culture that I'm, my, I inherited as a part of me. So it's been really hard, you know, I found out I have like this massive extended family and so many cousins and aunts and uncles and all of these great things. I can't even speak Spanish. I really should learn, honestly, that and ASL are two of the things that like I really want to take the time to learn. But also like I never have free time for sleeping, just normal people stuff, but I'm working on it. Um, but this article I read brought up a very, very good point, and I think it really, this quote embodies heavily um, a lot of how some of the Mexican and Mexican-American doll collectors feel about this doll specifically. So it was that Katrina's are generally regarded as a personification of Mexicanness itself, often in contrast to the Halloween traditions imported from the U.S., Many Mexican commentators and cultural nationalists characterize the Halloween influence as a contaminating cultural invader that potentially weakens, imperils, and falsifies Mexican culture as embodied in Dia de los Muertos. And so, with this doll being very obviously American influenced, um, very just stylized towards the American concept of Dia de los Muertos versus what the Mexican concept of Dia de los Muertos is. I think that in itself is where a lot of people drew the line and said, I don't like this. And I think that's something really important to keep in mind. So when you see Mexicans being like, I don't like it, it's culturally inaccurate, this is hurtful, you will see some Mexican people being like, well, no, I, I like it. It's not, it's not that bad. Like, it's not that culturally inaccurate. Um, but a lot of Mexicans feel very strongly about the fact that Dia de los Muertos is something that is very important to them because it is it is 
a holiday, like a religious holiday. Um, I personally am not Catholic because I was raised in a, a home of different religion. I personally don't. I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. Um, so I, I can't say that a lot of it is that for me. A lot of Dia de los Muertos for me is just a, a day to take time out and think about the loved ones that I've lost. And... And really just try to cherish those moments with my, my memories, you know? Um, talk to my kids about the people that we've lost that, you know, they were too young to remember and, and stuff like that. And so, for a lot of people, I think they also forget that this is based on a religious holiday. I mean, so you're insulting religious people as well as a specific ethnicity or whatever um, to some degree. I think that's something to keep in mind. I do. Um... But yeah, I don't know. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I've actually recorded quite a few, so like, I was missing for part of summer. So you're probably about to just see like a whole bunch of videos popping up like one after the other. And please forgive me for that. I have a lot to die. <sighs> a lot. But uh, yeah, definitely drop down in the comments tell me what you think. Hop over on Instagram and add me on there. Um, I have a TikTok, but I really don't use it that much. And I don't really use it for doll stuff, so you can probably ignore that unless you want to add me. Um, and with that being said, the next several videos will probably be dye videos. So enjoy, and I will see you guys next time.